welcome to another edition of New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. This is Ian Stark for New Blue. In this tutorial we're going to explore the basics of animation in New Blue's Title of Pro plugin. If you're new to Title of Pro you might want to look at the introduction video first as I'm going to assume that you already understand all about how to add styles and effects and how to add and move paragraphs around. This is the project we'll be working on. It's a 5 second bumper for an imaginary TV channel and the brief was to create something animated, colourful and mildly nauseating. One of the most exciting aspects of Title of Pro is the ability to animate not just the position, scale and rotation of your text, but also to be able to animate effects. And I'm going to be doing a fair bit of all of that in this spot. So let's fire up an empty Title of Pro project and start to build up our scene. We'll start by adding in a background and to do that I'm going to add a rectangle. I'll just delete the default text, I'm going to scale it up to fill the project window and I'm going to give it a nice orange colour. Now I'll be returning to this layer shortly to add the animation in but first I want to set up the basic structure of the project. Next up then is our layer of cubes and this is easier to create than you might imagine. Firstly I'll add a new paragraph, I'll delete the default text and add a whole line of rectangles. Now they're all a little bit bunched together at the moment so I'm going to use the leading function to space them apart. Now I'm going to copy and paste that line until I have five rows roughly centred and here's one I made earlier. Now let's give our cubes a style. I'm going to use a metal texture which I'll stretch to fill the entire paragraph and convert into an environment map so that when this layer moves we'll see some subtle reflections. I'm going to apply the first of our effects to this layer and that's the lens correction effect from New Blue's Video Essentials 2 collection. It's also in the starter pack so if you haven't bought or upgraded to the new GPU accelerated versions of New Blue's plugins you can still follow along. I'm going to use the TV in space preset and I'm going to animate it using keyframes. So the first thing to do is to click on turn on keyframes and you can see that this has created the first keyframe for us at the start of the timeline on the lens correction effects layer. Now for the start of the spot I want there to be no distortion so I'm going to change that value to zero. I also want the cubes layer to appear to shrink back over time so I'll increase the zoom up to 100. OK those parameters are now stored in the keyframe let's move forward to set our end position at around two seconds. So I click and drag the timeline head Click the plus sign to add a new keyframe which you can see appearing on the lens correction layer. Now let's adjust those values to around 60 for the zoom and 40 for the distortion to give us an exaggerated TV screen shape. If I rewind and play the animation you can see what we've got so far. That's pretty good. I'm not getting that nice reflection on the cubes though so I'm going to introduce a tiny rotation on the Y axis. So I'll bring up the object tab, turn on keyframing and at keyframe 1 I will enter a Y rotation of minus 5. Drag the timeline to 2 seconds and change the Y rotation value to 0. Now when we play the animation you can see that subtle reflection caused by the metal textures environment map. If you want more prominent reflections dial in a little more movement. While we're working on the cube layer let's just add a little 3D depth to our shapes and I'll raise the extrusion value to around 20. Now one thing that I'm not happy with is the way the animation suddenly starts then jars to a halt at the end and this is happening because by default Titler Pro is using a linear interpolation between keyframes. If you plot this progression on a graph with time on the x-axis and movement on the y-axis then the line between the two keyframes will be straight. What I really want is for the line to be curved so that it ramps up slowly accelerates in the middle then slows down at the end. And this is where smooth interpolation comes into play. It's a bit like smooth keyframes in Sony Vegas or easy in easy out keyframes in Adobe Premiere. So I'll go back to my lens correction layer and turn on smooth interpolation. I'll do the same in the object tab. I tend to turn this on by default as it seems to give a more natural flow to animations. Right next up is the TV screen frame. Again this is made up from a simple rectangle shape. Let me scale that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add a 3D outline in red. I'm 
I'll thicken that up a bit. Then I'll add another 3D outline in black and again I'll increase the thickness. Now I'm going to delete the white 3D face so we can see the cubes. I'll add in the lens correction effect using the TV in space preset again. And to make sure that I'm using exactly the same values as the cubes, I'm going to copy and paste the keyframes between the cubes and the TV frame layers. OK, I can see that the cubes layer isn't quite filling the TV frame, so there are a number of things that I can do. I can either go back and add another row, or much easier, I can stretch them using the Y scale on the Object tab. And I'll run the animation again, and that's much better. OK, let's turn back to our background for a moment. I want some movement here as well that will liven things up even further. So I'm going to use the Moving Shadows preset from the Rolling Waves effect, which comes in the Motion Effects bundle. Now I'm going to animate this effect so it rotates into its final position. So I turn on keyframing and smooth interpolation. The first keyframe is set for me, and I'm going to change frequency to 100, and angle to 90 degrees to give me a more stripy effect. I'll move forward to two seconds, add a keyframe, and adjust the angle to 180 degrees, so the stripes are now vertical. When I play the animation back, you'll see that the stripes are in fact still moving slightly at the end of the rotation, and that's because we have a value in the speed parameter. But that's fine, in fact I quite like it, so it stays. OK, time to add some text. It is a titling plugin after all. I'll add a new paragraph, change the text to our TV channel name, Media Gold. Sounds awful. And to save a bit of time, I've already created a style with a gold front face, a couple of red outlines, and I think there's a shadow in there somewhere as well. Now, if you remember, the text kind of dollied in from behind the camera, and we can simulate that using our Z position. So let's again turn on keyframes, click on Smooth Interpolation, and remember, the first keyframe's already been set for me with the active values at the time I turned on keyframing. In other words, the final position for the text. So what I want to do is to move to two seconds and add another keyframe with those values. Now, back at the beginning with keyframe one selected, I can raise the Z position to the limit. And when I run the animation, there you have the text dollying in from behind you. And we're almost done with our five second spot. But... I want to add in just one more animation to the text, and that's a wipe. I'm going to use an effect from one of the new GPU accelerated packs that works within Titler Pro, and that's Video Essentials 3. For now, I'm just going to use the split screen red laser preset, which sort of resembles a barcode scanner. And to make it even easier, we're going to work our way backwards. I'll turn on keyframing and add a second keyframe at two seconds. I'm going to change the colour to match the reds in my scene by using the eyedropper. And I want to uncheck lock image to split, otherwise the text will move rather than the scan line. And if I drag the split centre to the bottom right corner, you can see that we've revealed all the text. Now if I move back to keyframe 1 and drag the split to the top left corner, When I play back the animation, the text wipes on. Now there are a few other tweaks that I'd like to make just to finish this off. For example, continuing the cube's rotation so that the reflection carries on until the end. I could play around with other aspects like the colour of the cubes, maybe making them look a little bit more like gold by adding in a colour fixer plus effect and using the outdoors preset. And how about a vignette to draw the eye to the TV screen and text? 
If you're missing a few twinkles or a lens flare here and there, then you can add those back out in your NLE. But for me, for now, I think that's just about enough. I really hope this tutorial's given you a few interesting ideas, and as always, do go off and play around for yourself. There's a whole lot more to see in Titler Pro, and I look forward to showing you a few more tips and techniques in a future tutorial, when I've worked them out. So for now, this is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching, and see you next time.